Well, uh, look, uh, I, I actually made two points. One, how the world is changing. It is rebalancing. It is less Euro-Atlantic. I do not think everybody gets that. I think old habits die hard. I mean, very candidly, uh, there, are, there are still people in the world uh, who believe that uh, uh, their definition, their preferences, their views uh, must override everything else. So, since you mentioned this specific example, I, I don't know how familiar people are with uh, what was said at the Munich conference. Essentially, Mr. Soros said India is a democratic country, but he doesn't think the Prime Minister of India is a Democrat. Uh, and uh, by the way, a few years ago, uh, in the same conference, I was there at that time, he actually accused us of uh, planning to strip millions of Muslims of their citizenship, which of course didn't happen. It was a ridiculous suggestion. But you have to understand what this actually means. Uh, I could take a view that the individual in question, Mr. Soros, is an a old, rich, opinionated person sitting in New York who still thinks that his views should determine how the entire world works. Now, if I could only stop at old, rich, and opinionated, I would put it away. But he is old, rich, opinionated, and dangerous. You know, because what happens is when such people and such views and such organizations, they actually invest resources in shaping narratives. You know, I, I spoke about globalization. Now, what globalization does is it actually creates a lot of uh, the seamlessness of globalization, which creates all the opportunities, also allows you know, narratives to be shaped, money to come in, uh, you know, uh, foundations uh, to go about their, their agenda. Now, in this particular case, I mean, it is very clear that he has very strong political preferences. He actually thinks that, I mean, doesn't matter that this is a country of 1.4 billion people, we are almost there, uh, uh, who, whose voters decide how the country should run. He actually thinks, well, if, you know, uh, and, and again, I cite him as an extreme example, okay? Uh, but it's, uh, it's, there are other, uh, you know, manifestations of this in, in different countries where people like him think, uh, an election is good if the person we want to see wins, if the election throws up a different uh, uh, outcome, then we actually will say it's a flawed democracy. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, this to my, and, and the beauty is all this is done under the uh, pretense of advocacy of open, open society, of transparency, etc. So, uh, our generation, we have grown up with concepts like regime change, uh, which influence operations. Now, you can call it what you will. I mean, to me, uh, this really looks the same with a gloss uh, of some kind of do-goodism uh, on it. So, for me, it's actually necessary today that you have, we have today, a serious conversation uh, on democracy, you know. Uh, I, I, when I look at my own democracy, I mean, I have today a, a voter turnout which is unprecedented, uh, electoral outcomes which are decisive, electoral processes which are not questioned. We are not one of those countries where after the election somebody goes to arbitrate in court. Okay? We do not have any hanging chads either. Huh? Uh, and you know where you actually say, uh, I will sit in judgment over the verdict of voters. Now, my sense of democracy is the voters are supposed to decide. And it worries us. It worries us because, look, we are a country which went through colonialism. We know the dangers of what happens when there is outside interference in whatever guise uh, in your politics. If, if you do this kind of scaremongering, 
like millions of people will be deprived of citizenship. It actually does real damage to a societal fabric because somebody out there believes you and somebody and you don't leave it to accident by the way you back it up with an operation. So you create that kind of fear psychosis and then you use that to validate your original judgment. So I, I do think today between you know what, whose democracy, whose globalization, uh, why you know the transparency of how uh, global processes work. These are real issues which need to be debated.